Okay, all you algebra students out there need to know this. And what am I talking about here? Well, I'm talking about how to work with square roots and radicals. And uh, what level of algebra? Well, this is going to primarily be for those of you out there taking like an Algebra 1 course of first-year algebra. Certainly Algebra 2 college algebra students, you definitely need to be able to handle a problem like this. You may not uh, be fully getting into something like this in a pre-algebra course, but stick around because this is going to be right around the corner. And uh, we're going to go through this step by step, but this is going to be a bit of a practice problem. Uh, I'm going to actually show you the solution here in a second. So if you want to try this problem, check to see what um, you got, and then you know uh, basically grade yourself. If you got this wrong, continue to watch the video. If you still got this right, you still might want to watch the video just to make sure you took the proper steps or the most efficient steps. But uh, before we get going, I'm going to quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I've been teaching math for decades, and I'm telling you right now, if you're struggling in math, don't give up and just say, well, I'll accept a bad grade. Okay, You can do much, much, much better, but what you need is great math instruction. That's clear, understandable, and uh, most importantly, comprehensive, more than just a quick little video. Okay, You need a lot of practice problems uh, that show you each step to solve solutions in mathematics. So if you're at the middle school, high school, or college level, check out my Math Help program. You can find a link to it in the description of this video. I promise it will help you out big time in your math courses. Also, uh, most of you out there are going to be taking a test with a math section on it. You may not even realize it, but I'm talking about things like placement test or certification test. So like the GED, SAT, ACT, AccuPlacer, um, Alex exam, maybe a teacher certification exam. Um, I have a ton of test prep courses that can help you out uh, prepare for these exams. If you homeschool, check out my award-winning middle and high school uh, math courses for homeschoolers. Of course, you can find all this at my website. If you need a pair of math notes, hopefully you don't because you should be taking great notes on your own. But uh, I'm going to leave links to my math notes in the description of this video as well. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as this definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's get into this practice problem. As promised, I'm going to show you the solution. And there it is, 8 times the square root of 21. This is the final answer. So if you got this answer, I must go ahead and give you a nice little uh, lovely happy face with an A+. If you're totally confused, well, let's just kind of give you a blank face right now and get you to look like this. Okay, this, um, again, is going to... Um, you know, we're going to be needing key core skills in algebra. Okay, you got to be able to handle a problem like this. So let's just kind of generally talk about what you need to do or some of the skills that you need to have. And then, uh, of course, we'll go ahead and go through the steps to solve this problem. So here we have uh, square roots. Okay, uh, now this is a square root. It's also referred to as a radical. This symbol right here is a radical. You can have cube roots. You can have all different types of roots. But when you just have a little thing like this, there's actually a little two up there. This is a square root. So you got to know how to work with square roots and radicals. And this is a big topic in algebra. So here you want to simplify this uh, square root right here. And we're, I'm actually going to focus in on the square root part, the square root um, uh, part of this problem first, and then we'll kind of pull it all together. So you need to know how to simplify. So like, for example, here, okay, we have to simplify. You can't leave this fraction the way it's written. Okay, and here we want to simplify these square roots. So hopefully you know what that, um, what I'm talking about. Once we've done that, we're trying to add these terms, okay? And when you're adding square root terms, it's kind of like adding uh, com uh, com combining like terms in algebra. So for example, if I have two square root of five plus three square root of seven plus one square root of five, well, what can I do here? Well, here I have a square root of five and have a square root of five. So I can add these up, okay? And how do I add these up? by adding the little numbers in front of the square roots. And so here is one square root of five. This is two square root of five. So in total, I have three square roots of five plus this right here, three square root of seven. I just have to write that there because we have that all by itself. So this is the way you would do this problem. So you know, once we um, simplify all these square roots, 
we can see what we can combine. Okay, that's the main idea. So I'm kind of painting a big picture just in case you want to go ahead and tackle this problem. All right, so there is the solution. Let's go ahead and get into it right now. Okay, so as promised, I'm going to focus in on the square roots. And here we'll start with the square root of 189. So what you want to do is you need to factor 189. Okay, there, I have all kinds of separate videos on how to simplify square roots. Um, if you really um, are struggling with this, you definitely may want to look into like my Algebra 1 course. Okay, uh, This is a big, big skill in Algebra, uh, but I do have a few other videos on my YouTube channel that explains this as well. So the square root of 189, you want to kind of break this up in various factors. So let's say you're just playing around with some numbers. You're like, okay, uh, 7 times 27, these factors here, um, these two numbers multiplied together gets them back to 189. So what you're looking for is perfect squared factors, these numbers, 4, 9, 16, 25. What do these numbers have in common? There's perfect squares, right? So when I take the square root of these, I get nice little lovely numbers like this. Uh, square root of 16 is 4, square root of 9 is 3, square root of 4 is 2, etc. So you're looking for uh, numbers that are perfect squares so we can simplify this. So I'm like, okay, 7 times 27, I don't have a perfect square here, but I can break up 27 as 3, um, uh, uh, 9 times 3 is 27, okay, times 7. So this is another way of writing, writing this whole product. So 7 times 27 is the same thing as 7 times 9 times 3, which is 27. But the reason I wrote it that way is because this is a perfect square. Okay, I want a perfect square factor. Now what you um, have is I can break up these factors this way. The square root of 9 times the square root of uh, 3 times 7. All right, I could pull these uh, factors apart. I could do all kinds of different things with these. Well, let me just make sure you understand. The square root of A times B is equal to the square root of A times the square root of B. Okay, again, this is a quick practice problem on this. I can't turn this into a complete full lesson. Just trying to do a quick tutorial here for you. So if you need more help, you know, make sure you follow up. Okay, so here I could pull out, uh, I have the square root of 9 times the square root of 21, or 3 times 7. So this, uh, obviously 3 times 7 is 21, so this will be the square root of 21. The square root of 9 will be 3. Okay, so this whole thing here was able to simplify down to 3 times the square root of 21. Okay, so if you understand that, that's a very good. So let's go ahead and replace this with 3 square root of 21. And that will look like this. So 2 thirds times 3 square root of 21. And then we have the rest of our problem right here. Now I'll deal with this. I'm going to clean this up later. Uh, I just want to go ahead and continue to focus on the square roots. So we'll take on this square root situation next. Okay, so we have the square root of 3 over 7. So what's the deal here? Well, uh, this is actually um, equivalent to, just so you know, a fraction like the square root of 3 over 7 is equal to the square root of 3 over the square root of 7. So you could break up the numerator and denominator to their own separate radicals or square roots. But here is the main problem. This square root is 7, because this is equal to this, I can't have a square root in the denominator. Okay, something like this. This is what we call an irrational number. So uh, in order to fix this, I'm going to have to what we call rationalize the situation. All right. Now, again, these are things that you should know. Okay. If you don't make mental notes, because you might want to just, you know, completely review all of this. All right. I have a full chapter on this in my algebra courses. So um, we have the square root of seven times this. This will take care of, this will fix up this situation. We call this again, rationalizing. We will not have a irrational number, an irrational number in the denominator. Okay. So I have to multiply both the numerator and denominator by the square root of seven. Okay, so the square root of 3 over the square root of 7, we know this is equal to this. I can't have this. So the way I'm going to fix this up is I'm going to multiply both the numerator and denominator by the square root of 7. So the square root of 7 times the square root of 7 is the square root of 49 or 7. And then I have the square root of 3 times the square root of 7, which is equal to the square root of 21 over 7. So you see here, okay, I don't have a square root of an irrational number in the denominator, all right? Here, uh, in this situation, I do. This is a no-no in algebra. This is okay. So now we're going to replace this with this, okay? And let's go ahead and see how that looks right now. Okay, 
So we already fixed up that first uh, square root and now uh, we fixed up that second one. So now let's go ahead and focus on that third square root. And then we'll again, pull this all together and clean this all up at the end. All right, so the square root of 84, again, we want to simplify these. So I'm just gonna think about different factors and you can have different factors of the 84, um, you know, whatever you come up with. Again, you're trying to find 84, you're trying to find perfect squared factors, things like four or nine or uh, 16 um, or 25, you kind of get the idea. So let's uh, say uh, you just said, Okay, 84, that's 7 times 12. Well, I don't have any perfect square factors, but like right here, I can rewrite 12 as 4 times 3, okay? So, uh, so this could be 7 times 4 times 3 because I want that 4. I want that perfect squared factor right there. So I'm like, oh, okay. So the square root of 7 times 12, I can write as uh, the square root of 7 times 4 times 3, which, of course, is 12. And now this is the same as the square root of 4 times 21, because I'm just going to multiply these two numbers together. So 4 times 21 is 84. And now I can break this up as a square root of 4 times the square root of 21. The square root of 4, of course, is 2. So this would be 2 times the square root of 21. All right, so I'm going to replace that with 2 times the square root of 21. And here we go. Okay, so our first um, phase of this problem is to deal with all these square roots. Now we'll go ahead and uh, address these numbers here, simplify that, and then add any like terms uh, that we have, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and take the next step, and uh, we'll start off right here, okay? So let's see here. I have 2 thirds times 3 times the square root of 21. Clearly the three is cross canceled. That's gonna leave me with 2 times the square root of 21 right there. And then here I have 14 times the square root of 21 over seven, so seven goes into 14, two. So that's gonna be two times the square root of 21. And then this is just gonna be two times two times the square root of 21. So you're just gonna distribute it in two, two times two. That gives us four square root of 21. All right, now let's notice here, we all, uh, all of these terms, not we all, all of these terms here are the square root of 21. So I can add these all up. So how many uh, square roots of 21 do I have? Well, I have four here. Okay, I have four there, I have two here, I have two there, so two, two, and four. Last time I checked is eight. So we have eight square root of 21, and there is the answer. Okay, so how did you do? I mean, honestly, if you were able to get this all right, all on your own, I must give you a nice, lovely, happy face, an A++. Matter of fact, I'm gonna give you a good old 1984 flat top haircut, and let's go ahead and give you a nice 150% for being an awesome algebra student today, okay, and some stars to make you feel extra special. Basically, I'm trying to celebrate your success if you're able to do all of this. That's very, very good. Now, this isn't all inclusive in terms of everything you need to know in algebra, but it shows your ability to work with radicals, simplify a problem, and, uh, you know, work a problem down. Okay, to get the right answer. You could see a problem like this requires a lot of steps, okay, a lot of work and knowledge. And the only way you're going to get good at this is through, uh, by practicing. So don't do one easy problem be like, oh, I know what I'm doing. I'm sure I can do all other problems. That's not uh, an, a smart approach to being good at anything. Remember, algebra is a skill. Okay, and the only way you're going to get better at stuff is just practicing the right way over and over and over again. And that's what I do in my math help program. I have a ton of problems, a variety of problems, basic problems, more, you know, intermediate problems, and then super challenging problems, because that's what you're going to see on tests and quizzes. All right, if this little video helps you out, though, please uh, consider helping me out by liking and subscribing. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.